Amrita, Majulita, chapter 9, text 280. <laughs> Subraka Tirtha Aila Nyasi Shuramani Golokarne Shiva Deki Aila Dwaipayani Subraka Tirtha Aila Nasi Shuramani Golokarne Shiva Deki Aila Dwaipayani Subraka Tirtha Aila Nasi Shiromani Gokane Shiva Deki Aila Dwaipayani Subraka Tirtha Aila Nasi Shiromani Gokane Shiva Deki Aila Dwaipayani Subraka Tirtha Aila Nasi Sharomani Next Bolo
Translation. After seeing Panchaspara, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Kokarna. While there, he visited the temple of Lord Shiva and then he went to Dwaipayani. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the crown jewel of all sannyasis, then went to Suparaka Tirtha. Purport by Siddha Prabhupada. Siddha Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gokarna is situated in North Karna in the Karnataka state. It is about 33 miles south of Karwar. That's about what, 60 kilometers? How many kilometers? Six, 60 kilometers south of Karwar. This place is very famous for the temple of Lord Shiva known as Mahabaleshwara. <coughs> Hundreds and thousands of pilgrims come to see this temple. Suparaka is about 26 miles north of Mumbai or Mumbai. In the Maharashtra province near Mumbai is a district known as Tana. And a place known as Supara. Subaraka is mentioned in the Mahabharata Santi Parva chapter 41 verse 66-67. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vasaya Bhutale Shami Jinamane Namaste Sarvati Devi Gauravane Prajarane O Magina Timananda Sia Gina Ganasu Tatuan Madam Gena and the Sasuka Vena Shri Tatanam Sayam Rubakala Bande Ham Sri Guru Sri Gita Parakamana Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagata Tam Sagana Raghunatan the Tams Tams Devam Savaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Sakrishna Tetanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Bhadam Lalita Sri Vizakanitam Sha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dhani Blandu Jagapate Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorenge Radha Vrindavani Sri Suti Devi Pranamali Bhaviti Vanja Kalpa Kripas Cha Kripas Sindhu Beva Cha Bhavi Vaishnava Purnamo Jaya Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare Sri Vasudhi Gauda Hare Actually, so Suparaka is mentioned here, a district near Mumbai. It's uh, 26 miles around 50 kilometers north of, Bum of Mumbai. So this verse has some hidden excitement in it, which I didn't realize myself, and I assure you, None of you know this, I assure you. Are you ready for this? Near Mumbai is a district known as Tain or Tana. It used to be Tain and now they say Tain, right? 
That's where our temple is located, is it not? Huh? This is, that's, your, that's where our temple is located, Bhaktivedanta Hospital also. Bhaktivedanta Hospital is in that area. No, no, you see, the, the temple is just down the road from Bhaktivedanta Hospital. It's the same district. You say Tane? Yes, Tane. The last minute of the day, so now you can tell everybody that Mahaprabhu went to location of our Iskand temple in Tani. I'm not making this up, it's not wishful thinking, it's not speculation. It's written right here by Srila Prabhupada in Majjhilila, chapter 9, text 280, purport, that Mahaprabhu went there. So that means that Mahaprabhu also went where the Bhaktivedanta Hospital is located. Hariba, you can do better than that. Hariba. Actually, I didn't know that until I just now read this purport by Prabhupada. So much for those that say that the hospital area is mundane. <laughs> It's a place of pilgrimage. <laughs> Bhaktivedanta Hospital is a place of pilgrimage. Raja Vidya Raja Guru, it's a great secret. Here the secret is revealed that Bhaktivedanta Hospital and our Iskand Temple in Tena district are places of pilgrimage. Of course, the Iskand Temple is naturally a place of pilgrimage because Radha and Krishna are situated there. It's a very nice temple. But what a surprise that Mahaprabhu went there. That's amazing. So here we're hearing about his tour about, of North India. Earlier in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we heard the details about his tour of South India. So practically speaking, Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu and our Vaishnava saints have covered every square kilometer of India. Haribo! Now do you understand why India's a sacred truth that the whole nation, believe it or not, it's just temporarily polluted by McDonald's and KFC and all that uh, That will all be destroyed by time. <laughs> These things appear and disappear. All under the influence of Kala Rupa. Like sometimes there are spots on the sun. There are spots on the moon. Does that mean the sun and the moon are polluted? No, so there are so many defects now in modern Bars Varsha. So much sinful activity is going on. But this movement has been created by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to wipe out all sinful activity in all directions. Haribo! I was weak. Haribo!
Come on, wipe out all sinful. Wiping out all sinful and all dharma, all dharma in all directions. Let's start with Mayapur Chandradaya Mandir. I had the good fortune of being present for the giant chakra installation. There are two chakras, one maha-sized chakra and one medium-sized chakra. The giant chakra is as tall as from the floor three quarters of the way up these columns here. That's how, how large the giant chakra is. <coughs> from the ground level you can't tell how big the chakra is. It, it looks smaller but don't be fooled. It's not small. That's what, 10 meters tall? That's the height, 20 feet? Which is how many meters? Seven meters. Huh? Seven meters. Seven meters? Anyways, that's, it's big. The devotees and the men workers who were standing near it were dwarfed. <laughs> I had the good fortune of being able to do Abhishek for that chakra. <coughs> Some amazing good fortune. A chakra. Because the, the Shastra says wherever the Lord's chakra is located, there cannot be a dharma. Now, as the sincere devotees construct more and more temples all over the world, especially in India, there are more and more Shudashan chakras. It was the Sudarshan Chakra that cut off the head of Shishupal. You know the story. It's in the Krishna book. That um, Shishupal's mother knew that Krishna was des uh, destined to kill her son. She knew that. So she was trying to buy some time. She said, okay, fine, that's the way it goes. But please give me one benediction. Namely, don't kill him until his 100th blasphemy of you. Actually, Shishupa was not an ordinary jiva. As soon as he could talk, his words were blasphemy of Krishna. So, actually, since his very birth, he was blaspheming Krishna. But the, the Rajasri of Jagna, Krishna was counting because he was foaming at the mouth. You see, Shishubal was furious. It's a, a, a juicy story in the Krishna book. Krishna book is available in Hindi. No excuses. <laughs> So, Sishupal was furious that Krishna was the top guest of honor and the top object of worship at the Jagna. He couldn't swallow that. 
और उनको वहां पर सबसे उत्तम व्यक्ति के रूप में प्रदर्शित किया किया जा रहा है so he starts blaspheming Krishna, certainly. And he's saying, what is this nonsense? All Dharma has been lost. Who is he to be talking about Dharma? <laughs> Sinful man. He's talking about Dharma. What is this nonsense? Krishna is only a coward man. And not even a Kshatriya. Of course, that's a blunder because... Yeah, that's very interesting. The real reason behind Krishna appearing as the son of the of Devaki and Vasudev, the real reason, Rajaviji Rajaguya. I mean um, <coughs> there are unlimited reasons of course to satisfy their love to satisfy the devotion. But there's another reason, confidential reason. Vasudev, we can say is because it's Nitya Leela. He's a Kshatriya. Krishna had to appear as the son of a Kshatriya. Because he had some killing to do. And he had some royal administration to do later in Dwarka Leela. Why vices don't do that? When Nana Maharaj is referred to as the king of Braj, that, is, that doesn't mean he's Kshatriya. It means he's the king of the coward men. The top, the top leader. And he was very, very, very wealthy, extremely wealthy. So much for the idea that farms are just to put devotees out to pasture along with the cows. <laughs> Many devotees think that farm means Okay, fine. There's, they think it has nothing to do with preaching. They think it's sudra. They don't they can't say it because it's not philosophically correct. But in their hearts they think it's sudra. Only sudras will do farming. What a nonsense. This is going on in our own society. He used to be, if, if somebody couldn't do anything else, they'd be sent out to a farm. If, if, if they couldn't, if they couldn't do pujari work or they weren't good collectors, <laughs> that was the conception on which this movement that was never Prabhupada's conception or never actually I had the good fortune of visiting <coughs> Radna Swami's exceptional project the Govardhan project. <coughs> That's a rural project. What they've done there is miraculous, alter the vision of Radna Swami. Of course, his vision is coming from Srila Prabhupada. Of this, there's no, his empowerment. He's coming from Srila Prabhupada. So much for nonsense side critics who criticize this God, criticize this God, gurus. This is nonsense. They can't do what my God brothers are doing. They can't do it. Why didn't they do it then if there's such hot stuff? If their conception is so, so right on, then why they can't do what my authorized, empowered God brothers are doing? They can't do it. 
It's just plain old fashioned envy. Sorry. So, Radna Swami's success at that Govardhan project is that he's following Prabhupada's instructions for New Vrindavan. They, they tried in New Vrindavan, but it really never got fully off the ground. But of course, Radna Swami was a resident of Vrindavan, I mean New Vrindavan. Perhaps you know in the early days, uh, long before Prabhupada's departure and even later that Radha Swami was cow department. So, that's how Radha Swami started his illustrious history of devotional service started. He likes to tell the story about there was one huge cow. I mean, the, the, because they're uh, Jersey cows in, the, in America, they use Jersey cows, the black and white ones, you know. Um, so these cows, some of them grow to giant size, I don't know how many kilos one of them weighs, but my god, they're huge, you know. Probably five, six times larger than an Indian cow. I'm not joking. You look up Jersey cow on the net, you'll see. <coughs> so, because um, Radha Swami Seva was to milk the cows. So, there was one giant cow, just for the sake of discussion, let's say the cow weighed a whopping 300 kilos, 400 kilos, I mean giant cow, we're talking about a giant cow. This cow, particular cow, was known as being uh, short-tempered. <laughs> but he was assigned to milk this particular cow. <laughs> And it was stuff they knew that she would kick, you see, when, when milking they knew that she would kick. So that's not very pleasant, getting kicked while you're trying to milk a cow. So they decided, okay, we'll, we'll disarm her. They tied her back legs. They figured, okay, problem solved. <laughs> this giant cow, then, so Radha Swami is peacefully trying to milk the cow. Underneath the cow, you have to go underneath the cow to milk it. He's peacefully trying to milk this giant cow. But she was irritated because she was an angry cat. So, although her back legs were tied, she kicked anyways. So what happened? 400 kilo cow crash on top of Radna Swami. Yes, it's a true story. Boom, this giant cow crash on top of Radha Swami. He's still around to tell the story. They used, they used to have a trick in New Vrindavan. 
They would tell uh, an innocent newcomer, new devotee coming to New Vrindavan, they say, Did you know that there's a lotus flower shape on the tit of a cow? They would tell the devotees. <laughs> and say, they would say, You have to look very closely, otherwise you won't see it. <laughs> So the <laughs> unsuspecting devotee looks closely at the tit of the cow. <laughs> Suddenly the other devotee goes squish. <laughs> Squeezes the tit on the cow and the milk goes all over the face of the guest. <laughs> this is an old pastime, I, don't, I doubt they still do that, I don't know. So the instructions that Prabhupada gave Radha Swami were to develop, uh, not, not to Radha Swami, he gave it to the managers of New Vrindavan at that time. It was Kirtananda and um, departed, they both departed, his partner Hari Griva, they are the ones who started the New Vrindavan project decades ago. So Prabhupada ordered them to develop the nine forests of Vrindavan. There at the New Vrindavan property, Prabhupada went in all nine forests. I don't, I don't think they ever completed. I, so, I mean, they got started, but I don't think they completed. There was such a tumultuous history. <laughs> <coughs> However, Radha Swami heard and knew about these instructions. <laughs> Miraculously, being empowered by Srila Prabhupada and sold out the proceedings in Srila Prabhupada, that's real acharya. You got to know what real acharya is. Real acharya is sold out to pleasing and carry out instructions of prior acharyas. That is real acharya. That was constituted acharya. There's nothing vague or foggy about it. So being empowered by Srila Prabhupada miraculously, Rod <coughs> Radha Swami has created the nine forests of Vrindavan at the Govardhan farm project. Everything is there including Govardhan Hill, certainly. There's even, the, my favorite part of that project is the River Jamuna Park. There's a park. You've been there? So, Sooner or later, everyone should go there and see this place. It's a place of pilgrimage. There's a real Jabuta River there. It's not fake. And the river is about as long as the width of this temple building, a little longer. So what makes it the river Jamuna? According to Shastra, as soon as you take some water from a sacred river, <coughs> and pour it into some other water, even if it's water in a ditch, it becomes non-different from the sacred river. Hariba! 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 
what many of you probably don't know is how sacred is this Shalagram Jal. As soon as ordinary water hits Shalagram <laughs> It becomes all of the sacred rivers of the universe. Penny ball. So that means it's non different from Radhakund. I put it out here every night. No, no, nobody's doing the seva. If somebody wants to do that seva of distributing the Shalagam Jal, because it dump it in and merge it in with the Radharaman and other Shalagams here. But nobody's been doing a service. <coughs> and unfortunately, it's just been such valuable sacred water. And the very the very tasty Panchamrita five ingredients, milk, honey. Dahi, ghee, sugar. So dahi, ghee, shahad, chili, dhu. I've just been sitting in my refrigerator. Nobody's distributing it. What a lost opportunity. You didn't know I had all the sacred rivers of the universe in my refrigerator. Now you know all the sacred rivers are in the refrigerator. Ajitai knows. And, uh, you know, other devotees who do, he knows, Mohan Gorchandra knows. Because sometimes he bathes Shalagram. Karuna knows. He bathes Shalagram also. Who can imagine the benefit of bathing the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Inconceivable. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say, Don't try to see God. But work in such a way that God will see you. Well, obviously, if you give him a bath, he's going to see you. <laughs> oh, who is giving me such nice bath? <laughs> oh, it's Karuna. Nice, very good. <laughs> now all of you sitting here should have... Huh? <laughs> he wants to do a daily? <laughs> Well, you could trade off with the other Prabhu. The other Prabhu is quite steady who is doing it now. You could trade off with him. <laughs> so he could serve Shalgam? You got second initiation? By serving our DJ's mother. Oh, uh, that's not a joke. That's not a joke. <laughs> See, uh, that's not a joke at all. Not at all. That's not an exaggeration. Not at all. Because we see, sitting in the back of the room there, <laughs> we see Prabhu, he was faithfully offering <laughs> prasad to my Jagannath deities every day. And then, out of line, out of time frame, suddenly I was shocked he got second initiation all of a sudden. <laughs> it was before, it was before the, uh, the time. I was surprised, I was very surprised. When, and the secret is because he was serving my deities every day.
Swagabati. But as soon as he got second initiation, <laughs> now he does not even come to see my deities. Did you ever thank them? No. They're the ones that gave you second initiation. We need to thank him for that. <laughs> Uninstalled deities are very powerful. Don't be mistaken. A lot of devotees don't realize that these Jagannath Baladeva and Subhadra on our altar here are uninstalled. Srila Prabhupada specifically commented on this. He said, Jagannath is so merciful, he doesn't require. In, uh, installation not required. Obviously, otherwise, go install them at the time that uh, this temple room was opened up, but he didn't. He somehow selected not to. I have to tell you a story, a most amazing story about the mercy of Jagannath and give you some real idea about the special mercy of Jagannath. There was one, uh, this was years ago, I don't know, something like eight years ago. There was one guest who was coming to the temple. Every evening he was coming. Very regularly. I noticed I noticed that he was coming regularly, but somehow or other nobody was even saying Hari Bol to him. So I, so I thought, well, he's a sincere person, newcomer to Krishna consciousness, so I started preaching to him. You know this story, Karuna? But his wife was very hostile to Krishna consciousness. There's sometimes this in insecure lady department, sometimes some fantasy that, oh my God, my husband will run away from home, abandon me and the kids, and move, shave up and move in the temple. This is irrational fantasy. Yeah, we, we would not even allow, but they don't know that. Emotional. <laughs> sure. Shows you. So she thought, Krishna is stealing my husband. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but it was not a hostile theft. <coughs> it was a very loving theft and it did not involve abandoning his wife and kids. So, but somehow she tolerated he was coming to the temple every day. At that time he lived in, in Pujabi Bagh. Later he moved. So this was, I, 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 he was bewildered. He thought, how can I, how can I bring my wife around? Because she couldn't really preach to her. You know, the, the offense against the Holy Name, you cannot preach the glories of the Holy Name to an unfaithful person, so how can he preach to her, you see? So I gave him some very, very unconventional advice. I said, 
get some nice Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, probably about at least eight or ten inches tall. Put, no, she's a Hindu lady, so she naturally, she's, there was probably a Gopal, so she's going to make an offering and she's going to serve Jagannath just because he's there. Only about a year went by. One day she stunned her husband. Do you know this story? She stunned her husband. Suddenly she said to him, We have to go to Vrindavan to buy some clothes for the deities. Haribal! I'm not making us up. It's a true story. In the meantime, this devotee was skyrocketing his advancement. Only about a year later, he took initiation from Bhakti Charu Swami. Now he's running his own blog and has a weekly program at his home. You know who he is? He's running his own blog and he has a little Sangha. So this is how we spread Krishna consciousness. Of course, our Desha Kalapatra considerations. We are all inside of the pastimes of Mahaprabhu. They are Ditya Lila. They're going on, and we are inside of these pastimes. Anybody have any questions or comments? Remember, if you don't have any questions, it means you understood everything. Huh? <coughs> <coughs> okay, Jaga Guru, Sirupaba, Raki, Jai, Grantara, Shimad, Chaitanya, Charter, Mritaki, Jai, Nitago, Premanandi, Hari Hari, Bo.